Guys, you're overreacting. Nobody is dying. A dead mouse! Ah, great. I'm gonna be sick. In the house of the dead, what are we gonna do? We're gonna get rabies! What? What the f <laughs> You two to LJ Reaction Museum. What did you then like? In these videos, you're gonna see what is the reason why people would dislike these movies. Right? Today, Inside Out, the first one, part of the second one. Right? Now, how did Pistar make that movie? And how did movie is the least greatest Pixar movie in the world. I thought the movie was top tier, but people thought it was, was down here. They they thought the movie wasn't in good focus, then then had good picture. Maybe maybe the movie off into the shadow. Well, for some reason, I never thought I'd do a Pixar movie on this channel. I don't know why. Okay, I just okay, never okay. thought I would. Too mainstream, you know. I only talk about obscure underground indie films like Twilight or High School Musical. But then I started making videos about Despicable Me and just threw all the rules in the trash. Disney and Pixar recently said that they're set on forever making only sequels and prequels now. They're not gonna gonna waste their time on those silly, personal, autobiographical stories, okay? Because we all know that true art's created in a vacuum, free of all those pesky human experiences and social climates. Hence, Lightyear, Toy Story 5, and- What, 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 what you trying, what you trying to get? What you trying to get about Pixar and Disney, about their movie? Because sometimes Disney movie good, Pixar movie good. So, what's the difference between Inside Out and why Inside Out is worse? Like, you got Toy Story, you got Buzz Lightyear, you got, you got stink cars, like, bro, is the pit start going, going great? Or, the pit start going down the, uh, shoot. Now, Inside Out 2. Turns out I had completely forgotten that I saw Inside Out when it was in theaters. You see, when I saw it, I was on a I never saw story. Inside Out in theaters. I saw it I saw it on the, on the uh, red box. The movie, just slowly inching my hand across the armrest, and eventually our fingers Not just, like, barely touched. Not what the red like, box is. If y'all want to know, just know, y'all, just know, the red box, y'all get to watch any movie that come out in the movie theater for free without paying. That's all y'all got to know. Anyway, you know, I gotta say, Inside Out is probably Pixar's last great movie. Now, How? Now, 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 hold on, I know some of you are gonna do that internet thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love pancakes. Why do you hate waffles? <laughs> Turning red is very good. It's very good, okay? But I just don't think it has that same Pixar magic that, like, Wally, Up, uh, Monsters, Inc., or Inside Out. You, you're right, you're right. Turn red? Turn red is good. But it's not up to, like, Wally, Monster, Inc., or Up. Uh, and not, and not with them. Okay, if it was with them, bro, well, I, I wouldn't complain. But it's, it's, it's decent. I say red. Turn red decent. Him. Actually, Coco might be up there too. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just because I've never maybe, turned red before. But all the same, now that Inside Out 2 is in theaters, what do you say we go back and check out Inside Out, the first? Come along, kids. Let's yeah, yeah, let's, let's check out the first one. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? I mean, honestly, I think most people are pretty simple, you know? Like Kelsey, the inside of her head's like 80% Uber Eats, about 15% Instagram clothing sales, and like 5% thinking about how I could totally probably get away with murder if I wanted to. So you tell me, you tell me, fifty percent of her head is just about anxiety. Like she literally, definitely on your anxiety. Like she take away that happiness, but that's it. But but mostly she you anxiety more. She take away the anger, the disgust. She take away the sadness, the fear, the sarcasm, and the yellow one, and the pink one, and just only care about herself when anxiety. There she was. Hello. Riley. 
Hey, good thing this movie came out in 2015 and not 2024, you know what I'm saying? Or else it would have been, yeah. oh, there she and is, if it, if it, our little chlamydia. Anyway, so this if is it came out in 2024, nobody will be able to watch that. Nobody will want to watch that. I'm glad it came out before 2024. Well, I just saved our lives. Yeah, you're welcome. Riley, if you don't eat your dinner, you're not going to get any dessert. Eat this! Right, right. Here comes an airplane. Oh, airplane. We got an airplane, everybody. And eventually she gets to 11 years old. Her life is perfect. She plays hockey. She has yeah. her best friend. She lives in a three-bedroom house with a backyard in Minnesota. So the that movie bad. hasn't been invented yet. She's living in the golden age, I tell you. But then one day, everything changes. Riley's 11 now. What could happen? <laughs> Okay, not what I had in mind. That's right, her family moves from Minnesota all the way to San Francisco. And Riley is so excited to see her new house. You know, I mean, it's probably got like a giant water slide and made out of cookies or something, right? Yeah, right. We're getting close, I can feel it. There it is. There's her new house. Yeah. Oh, come on, Riley, this house is adorable, and it probably only costs like eight million dollars. Real wood floors, one yeah. of those windows that does the thing. Too come bad. on, you can fix them up. I'll agree with him. You can, you can fix them up, make the house look decent, make it look like your old house, like, fix up the wall, the floor, put new couches in, like, you can, you can do something with, with, with the house. Guys, you're overreacting. Nobody is dying. A dead mouse! Ah! Right. I'm gonna be sick. In the house of the dead, what are we gonna do? We're gonna get rabies! What? What the fuck? <laughs> I, I really, I really didn't pay attention to that. No, 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 no. I'm starting to envy the dead mouse. Yeah, okay, well, this room would run you about 6000 a month to rent it, and you get to live here for free. So maybe let's just roll back the attitude a little bit there, Riley. Hmm? So with this whole moving thing, Riley's emotions are kind of running all over the place. There's the joy of excitement from being in a new place. There's the fear of being in a new place. There's the disgust of being in a new place. And the anger of realizing that she has another 80 years stuck in this flesh prison. And of course, there's all her sadness when she realizes that there will never again be any more Bionicles movies. And if only she'd taken the time to appreciate what she had in the moment. But of course, she's trying to make the best of it, as 11-year-olds are known to do. And read the contract. Anderson makes her move. She's closing in. Hey! Oh, no, you're She's not. Oh, coming behind you. Watch out. Watch out. Yeah! Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Grandma. Grandma. Uh-oh, she put her hair up. We're in for it. Wow, honey, tying your hair back. <laughs> it's not even my birthday. Now, as if moving to a whole new city wasn't bad enough, their moving van has been drastically delayed. So they basically have none of their stuff at all. Riley has to sleep on a sleeping bag on the floor, and just in general, things are not going well. <laughs> uh, sorry, hold on. Hello? Wait, what? You're kidding. The investor's supposed to show up on Thursday, not today. It's okay. What are you doing? Uh, just uh, give me one second. Um, you know what I've realized? Riley hasn't had lunch, remember? You know, just a quick aside here, but like, whoever was in charge of animating Joy just did the most amazing job. Like, it's such a they perfect, did. like, like, like you kind like of you energy. Can tell they they, they, they put, put in detail I mean, of course, in, everything into is Joy. Animated, you like, can tell they put detail Joey into Joy. Like, they just, they just really swung for the fences here. Oh, remember the funny movie? Dies? More like when the rain runs down our back and makes our shoes soggy. Everything just starts feeling droopy. Hey, 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 easy. Uh -huh. Crying helps me slow down and obsess over the weight of life's problems. Uh -huh. <clears throat> So this movies get a little too real, but all the same, things are a little rough, and Riley's emotions are all over the place, but hey, at least the family has each other, or something. Barf. Yeah, we could cry until we can't breathe. We should lock the door and scream that curse word we know. It's a good one. Now hold on. Look, we all have our off days, you know. Hi, honey. The mom bad news train is pulling in. <laughs> it's more like the MILF train, am I right? <laughs> Pixar mom strikes again. Whew, these people never miss. Now they're saying it won't be here till Tuesday. Can you believe it? Toot, toot, toot. Where's dad? On the phone. This new venture is keeping you pretty busy. I arrest my case. Oh, your dad's a little stressed. You know, 
Getting his new company up and running. Now, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. This dude moved his whole family to San Francisco with no job in place? He just moved here trying to set up a company? Are you stupid? Hey, sorry, guys. I know things are a little tough for you, but it's always been my dream to set up my own logistics firm. I guess all I really want oh, to say is... Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Did, did he really actually try to make his own company? So you moved your whole family from Ben store to make a whole... I really, really didn't really get to understand why the dad even moved, moved from Minnesota to California. Huh? You know, through all this confusion, you've stayed, well, you've stayed our happy girl. Your dad's under a lot of pressure. But if you and I can keep smiling, it would be a big help. Now, this scene will become very important later, so just keep it in the back of your head. Anyway, so we skip ahead to Riley's first day at her new school, which is always a very exciting but very scary time. You know how it is. It is. Okay, it is. Okay, it's a cool girl at 2 o'clock. I never you spent... Know, double years? Let me see. I never spent going to a new school. Never did. I never really experienced that. Pierced infinity scarf. Whoa, wait, what? Almost finished with the potential disasters. Worst scenario is either quicksand, spontaneous combustion, or getting called on by the teacher. Hey, everybody. We have a new student in class today. Are you kidding me? Out of the gate. Brown. So, Riley has to introduce herself to everyone, and while she's doing this, for some reason, sadness can't help herself, and she keeps touching all the memories inside Riley's head. <laughs> Think about how kind of insane school is. Like you're with all these kids for like eight hours yeah. a day, right? And like no crying, no farting, don't say or do it. Like 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 you you in school with with these kids for eight hours a day from Monday to Friday every day. Like there's so much rules to you not to do something in school. I'll make you get laugh at, tease at, or bully. Anything that goes against the social rules, which are always changing every day, and no one tells you. Now, like I said, Sadness keeps trying to touch all the memories for whatever reason, and Joy is trying to stop her. But one thing leads to another, and what do you know? They both get sucked out of the whatever this place is and thrown outside with no way back. Thank you, Riley. I know it can be tough moving to a new place, but we are happy to have you here. <laughs> And so now Riley is just left with fear, disgust, and anger, but no joy or sadness. Now, of course, joy and happiness are important, allegedly, not that I would know. And sadness is a way to focus and expel the negative emotion. So Riley's just kind of sitting here stewing in her negativity with no way of actually dealing with it. I found a no, no. hockey league right here in San Francisco, and get this, tryouts are tomorrow after school. Oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. So, how was the first day of school? It was... Fine, I guess. I don't know. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Just shut up! This family stinks. No one understands me. Now hurry up and take me to Hot Topic, Dad, so I can get more armor. Oh my right. god. I, I, I didn't expect you to do something like that. I didn't expect you to do something like that. Five days a month, your emotions just turn into... <laughs> But yeah, so Riley is just like not in a good place right now. And while this is all going on, Joy and Sadness are trying to get back to Riley's control room and bring her emotional state back to some kind of equilibrium. Because you see, not only does she not have Joy or Sadness right now, but also Joy has all of Riley's core memories with her. And everything that makes up Riley's entire personality is now missing. So all of her personality islands, or like whatever these are, they're all turned off and starting to crumble. And each core memory powers a different aspect of Riley's personality. Like Hockey Island. Goofball Island is my personal favorite. But Friendship Island is pretty good, too. And, of course, Family Island is amazing. Man, life is so blissfully simple when you're 11. Goofball Island, Family Island, Hockey Island. Like, now I'm here in my 30s, and it's like, self-deprecation lane. Why is there always more laundry, you stand? What's this weird clicking sound my shoulders do now, Bill? Bionicles. So, Riley doesn't care about hockey. You're not wrong, but why? I, why, why, why? Maybe, maybe. Um, I don't she's I don't anymore she's pushing away her best friend from back in minnesota her internet search history is just full of weird things like how to date bts bts kissing montage free robux was 9 11 real how how uh, does ken make baby with bts our dreams just me in an alternate reality and when i wake up is the other me dreaming of me right now funny cat videos so as joy and sadness try to make their way back they run into a certain someone they haven't seen in a long thing nearly three Wait, I know you. No, you don't. I look like a lot of people. No, 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 I do. <gasps> Bingo! 
wrong. Riley's imaginary friend. <laughs> what exactly are you supposed to be? You know what's unclear? I'm mostly cotton candy, but shape-wise, I'm part cat, part elephant, part dog. So Bing Bong over here is his old imaginary friend, who she hasn't forgotten quite yet, so he just kind of like wanders around everywhere doing, you know, whatever he does. <laughs> What? Yeah, you're not. You're not wrong. Riley really didn't quite forget about Bing Bong. Okay, Riley did forget about Bing Bong. Bing Bong being in the uh, trash already and going, and Riley did forget about her. But not her. Him. Her. I don't know. Cause that that crazy. Like you park um, kind can elephant, r r raccoon, whatever that look like. I don't, I don't get what Riley was thinking about when, when she made him. Because part dolphin. Dolphin? You gotta remember, when Riley was three, animals were all the rage. The cow goes moo. The horse goes neigh. That's all people talked about back then. Yeah. And so, with the help of Bing Bong, Joey and Sadness make their way through her long-term memory place thing, and they get in all kinds of wackadoo adventures, like going through the abstract Thoughtatron 5000. Fragmentation! All right, dude, that pack. Oh, we're in the second stage. We're deconstructing. Rock! Right. Why did we come in here? I told you, it's a shortcut! <laughs> We're two-dimensional. You know, this is one of those parts of the movie that just really elevated for me personally. Like, for just a couple minutes, they completely change how it's animated. They mix, like, 2D and 3D, and then they go back again. Like, this part must have been so fun to work on. And then at one point, it, they have to it, wake up. It probably would. It probably would be fun to work on that. But to do that, they have to awaken what? her deepest fear. Games and games. Oh. oh. Follow us. <laughs> Nothing like a good scare to wake you up, right? It's my handwriting. No, it isn't. That's my hand. I wrote no, that. No, but this one's my hand. <laughs> so, uh, is anyone else seeing this clown like quadruple cheeked up on a Monday like this? Hey, yo! Now go on. You cheek him. We got him. You cheek him. Round up, dick up. This movie's gonna make me act up. <laughs> and while they're doing, hey yo! One by one, Riley's personality islands are crumbling into dust because she's so mad and afraid all the time. And eventually, she decides to steal her mom's credit card and take a Greyhound bus all the way back to Minnesota. Now she does this because anger puts the idea bulb into this like spacey sprocket thing or whatever this is. And then this happens. <laughs> So because the train doesn't work anymore, Joey tries to ride a recall tube back to the control room, which she could have tried to do at literally any point in this movie, but whatever, anyway. But that also doesn't work, and short story even shorter, she and Bing Bong end up falling into the dump, where everything goes to be forgotten. Joy, Joy, what are you doing? Will you stop it, please? <laughs> Don't you get it, Joy? We're stuck down here. We're forgotten. And this is bad, of course, because if Riley forgets how to feel joy, then she's just going to be a millennial. Who would ever want that? Yeah. Good. Good. If Joy ends up disappearing, then Riley's going to feel, feel the anger and, and afraid and be like a millennial person. Yeah. You know, all, all she do is get mad at every little thing. Nah. Yeah, you know, I feel like these days a lot of people are like spending a whole bunch of time digging through their own version of this place. Star Wars is dumb Bobby. garbage now. It doesn't make me feel happy anymore. Maybe it was always kind of dumb. No, oh, it was really cool when I was seven, okay? And if I don't get that feeling back again soon, I'm gonna make so many of you. Not wrong. None. Like that, that like being sarcastic, where where you end up being sarcastic. Let's say a regular show, yeah, regular show is stupid. But then back in your head, you try and get that memory and that feeling, how how um, regular show was and how good the videos and the show was. Then you like like, bro, no one wants that sarcastic um shit. So in the end, Joy finds Bing Bong's old wagon that runs on song power that, that he and Riley used to ride around in back in their fugitive outlaw days, you know what I mean? And Joy and Bing Bong use it to get back up out of the dump. But... Woo! Bing Bong! We did it! We... 
Bing bong? Take her to the moon. Man, this part, I tell you. Like, Bing Bong represents all of Riley's childhood wonder and dreams and imagination. For her to grow as a person and get back to experiencing real joy again, he has to sacrifice yeah. himself to be forgotten forever, right? And, like, man, what the heck, Pixar? Why you gotta, why you gotta do this to me? But, yeah, so in the Yeah, end, like, like, why, why, why y'all gotta put that, put that in it? Like, bro, Bing Bong were, like, a imaginary um, person. And, yeah, yeah, go and put it in to a point where he go and die. And Riley got do not remember her uh uh fur friend. Yeah, crazy. Joy and sadness make it back to the control room by using a hundred copies of Riley's imaginary Canadian boyfriend. Love imagination land. Isn't it great? And there's always something new like Who the heck is that? Imaginary boyfriend. I would die for Riley. Oh, good. Oh, I've never seen him before. I live in Canada. <laughs> But, but you know, like, I also used to imagine, like, my perfect girlfriend back when I was, you know... T me too. Like, I'm, like, my perfect girlfriend, I imagine me with Billy Iris or Jenny Ortega sometimes. Like, bro, Jenny Ortega my favorite actor. And Billy Iris my favorite uh, um, woman artist. Like, I always imagine me on, on a date with Billy Iris or something. Or me party with, um... Uh, can you take out singing my song or 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 dancing with her? Twelve or whatever. Oh, if only there was a girl who was fun, me and pretty, and played video games and enjoyed other kinds of visual entertainment. And then I met Kelsey, and I'm still not convinced she's real. But here we are. Ooh, you love me. Hey, come on! How'd you get in here? This room is for cool kids only. So ultimately, Riley snaps back what the and again and gets off the bus. She runs all the way it. home and finally has an honest moment with her parents about how she's feeling and what she's going through. You need me to be happy. I want my old friends and my hockey team. Now, this, of course, relates back to that scene from earlier I told you to remember. Now, this is the point when Joy realizes that sadness isn't just some annoying negative emotion that needs to be stopped, but rather, by combining sadness and joy, you get nostalgia, for example. And all core memories are actually made up of multiple combinations of all of the base emotions to make more complex ideas. And by trying to force Riley to just be happy all the time, she was stunting her emotional and personal growth. You, you're taking right. You can't get, like, if you Joy, you can't force someone to be happy all the time. Because not then they're going to end up feeling the other emotion uh, sometime. So, so sometimes, yeah, it's time to feel more unhappy. But miss are happy. Right? Miss are happy and angry together. Happy and disgust. Miss are angry, disgust, and happy together. Like, happy all got to be in there. But, but you got to miss them up and combine the other, the other emotion with happy. Hey, I'm liking this new view. Friendship Island has expanded. Glad they finally opened that friendly argument section. I like tragic vampire romance island. <laughs> You say what? I love, I love how that becomes like a pillar of her entire personality. Oh, how? Sorry, I can't wait to get my own vampire boyfriend who's deep and mature and obsessed with me, but also knows when to back off and always has the perfect thing to say at the perfect time and has amazing abs and muscles even though he spends all his time with me and he's super mega rich because he's been holding on to a bunch of real estate since I, all the I, way back I, in I, I guess and I she guess, finally gets I her guess. first boyfriend at like 15 and goes over to his house to watch him play Warzone for four hours but yeah so now Riley's good with her family again and she's back to playing hockey and everything is as it should be oh. sorry She plays hockey and her name is Riley. Like, I don't think you got anything to worry about there, my dude. But I'm yeah. just saying, that's pretty much where the movie ends.